Are you the one who told me that you wanted to teach English in South Korea? If so, then I have a list of 10 very important things that will help you prepare for the adventure. Coming right up! In order to work as an English teacher in South Korea, there are three very important requirements that you need to have. Number one, you need to be a native English speaker. That means you need to have a passport, a valid passport from a country such as the USA, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, England and Ireland. The second thing, you need to have completed your four years of a general bachelor's degree university level. Um, if you have a master's degree, that's an additional bonus, that's a plus for you. But you need to have the minimum three to four years of a basic bachelor's degree completed before you even start thinking about applying for a job in South Korea. 15 years ago, you could have applied for any jobs without actually having completed your bachelor's degree. Times have changed and for the better. The third thing you need to have is a clear criminal record check. If you were unable to satisfy that requirement, you might as well forget it. You will not be able to get a job in South Korea. Three things you need to have. You need to be a native English speaker, you need to have a completed bachelor's degree, at least. And number three, you need to have a clear criminal record check. In addition to those three things, there are occasional requirements such as having a teaching certificate. That depends on the type of job you might be applying for. Certain schools will require people to have a teaching certificate, uh, a proper teaching license before applying. Uh, another thing some schools might require is uh, either a TEFL or a TESOL degree. Some things that are nice to have is a master's degree. If you have a master's degree in any area, you will find that it's a lot easier for you to find jobs that are a lot more lucrative. You'll have a lot more opportunities for positions as well as income. You could probably expect an additional $100 to $300 more if you do have a master's degree. Another thing that might be nice to have is some Korean skills. Uh, linguistic skills always come in handy and if you're able to communicate on the basic level, you know, say please and thank you and ask for directions or order a meal at a fast food restaurant, um, that will take you a long way and people will be most appreciative. Knowing some basic Korean will also be helpful when teaching children. Kids will love it, uh, it, it will bring smiles to their faces and it might be a good icebreaker on your first date. One of the best ways to find teaching jobs is to go on Dave's ESL Cafe. Dave's ESL Cafe has been around for a very, very long time and you can find all kinds of jobs. There are postings for Hagwons, which are private schools, there are postings for public schools and there are postings for universities as well on a regular basis. If you're very adamant about finding a public school job, then your best bet would be to look at the EPIC program, which is a government-sponsored program and it helps connect teachers with schools across the entire country. If you're looking for a university job, um, the requirements for university jobs have been raised here in South Korea. A few years ago, all you needed was a bachelor's degree. That is no longer true. These days, you need to have at least a master's degree, a minimum, and in most cases, uh, three-year period during which you taught at an academic level. If you do fall under the category of people with these qualifications, you can find most jobs for universities posted on, again, on Dave's ESL Cafe, or you could go directly to the university websites and find their employment section in which you will find the individual job postings. Your other option is to go through a recruiter. Recruiters can be comfortable because they have a lot of connections with a lot of schools and they'll be able to help you find a school that fits your needs. Like for example, if you would like to, to work uh, within a city or if you'd like to be away from a city and closer to the countryside, a recruiter might be able to accommodate that. If you do choose to go through a recruiter, make sure to read the contract provided by the school before you actually sign it. Never ever under any circumstances accept a job without having read the contract first and 
having actually spoken to somebody inside the school or the university prior to signing the contract as well. The recruiter would not be your employer. The recruiter is just the middleman who takes a profit from the recruiting process, from finding a teacher for the university or the school. So it's in their best interest to find as many teachers as quickly for these employers as possible. And the quality of either the school or the employer or the match might not be in the best interest because initially, because eventually in the end, the recruiter works for a commission. Make sure you read the contract thoroughly. Make sure you contact the university or the, or the school with which you're planning to sign a contract. Do not rely entirely on the, on the recruiter. 15 years ago, coming to South Korea was a breeze. I remember a friend of mine who, who was invited to come here by a school. The school asked him to come here, have a look at the World Cup. And they said, if you don't like it, you're free to go. They were paying for his flight. They were paying for his accommodation while he was here. Uh, they didn't require any specific documents. All he had to have was a, a bachelor's degree. This was 2002. By the year 2005, when I came to Korea, I still didn't even need to have a bachelor's degree. I remember having a conversation with a recruiter whom I told that I didn't have a bachelor's degree finished yet and that I would be finishing it within the next six months. And the response was, nah, you don't really need one for the time being. Once you get it, you'll ship it over. Times have changed. 15 years later, and these are the documents that you really, really need to have before you even consider coming to teach English in South Korea. You will obviously need a valid passport. You can't leave a country without a passport. The second document you will need is a diploma. In most cases, you will need to have the diploma apostle depending on where you're coming, uh, whether you're coming from England or Canada or the United States. Every country has it different, done different. You will have to have it stamped and signed by a legal entity, whether it's a lawyer or some other authority. You will also need to bring a sealed transcript. Make sure that the transcript is not older than three months and make sure that it comes in a sealed envelope. If the envelope is open, immigrations will not accept it and you will have to apply to the university to receive another transcript and it's just gonna postpone your entire trip. It's gonna take a lot longer for you to, to complete the documents. The fourth thing you need to have is a criminal background check. The best way to do that is to arrange for it in your home country. Some people, uh, in the past, some companies provided services where you could apply for these uh, criminal record checks from South Korea and they would, could process it for you in your home country. But one, that is very time consuming and two, I'm not even sure that these services are any longer available. So make sure that you get your criminal record check done in your home country before leaving. The fifth thing you need to bring are photographs for the purpose of providing you with a registration card, a work visa in South Korea, you will be required to submit some photos. You can take the photos here, it's very easy. Most immigration offices has a little, have a little photo booth in which you can hop in, take your picture, it'll cost you a little bit of money, not a lot, but a little bit, um, and the pictures will be ready within minutes. But if you do have your photos ready, just bring them in, and you save yourself a couple of bucks on the pictures. Number six, a helpful but not necessary essential is your resume. Let's assume that by the time you come here, you have already been offered a job and you have already submitted a resume and the required, or at least copies of the required documents. And so resume would be one of them. But it never hurts to bring a resume on a USB or have it stored in, in the cloud somewhere, Dropbox or whatever other storage system you use. I hardly believe that anybody lives without cloud or storage systems anymore. Document number seven, recommendation letters. Again, if you can send those in in your application package, you'd probably be better off to do that. But remember to bring copies, either hard or soft, on a USB or in the cloud. Bring recommendation letters, have them ready. They always help. And the final and optional thing, but definitely useful, and I think more and more places will be happy to have that, are your certificates, your CELTA, your DELTA, your TESOL, your TEFL, whatever you have, bring it in. The more the merrier. 
Here are the salary expectations for the different types of jobs that you could be doing in South Korea while teaching English. If you're a public school teacher in South Korea, you can expect to make anywhere between 2 to 2.5 million won, which translates to roughly 1800 to 2200 US dollars. In addition to your salary, you should be able to receive living expenses, which comes in a form of about three to four hundred dollars, depending on where you live, or three to four hundred thousand won, um, depending on the school and depending on the district and the area of, of the country. If you happen to move to a place like Seoul, the capital city, where expenses are a lot higher and living costs are a lot higher, you should be able to expect a little bit more from the school that you're gonna work for. The average salary for a teacher at a Korean Hagwon or private academy ranges anywhere from 1.9 million won to about 2.3, on occasions 2.4 million won. This also comes with additional housing allowance, which can either come in the form of provided housing or an additional three to 400,000 won provided by the institution. In many cases, the school asks the teacher whether they would choose provided housing or if they're able to find their own housing, in which case the school provides them with the additional fee. The third place that you can work in right after the public school and the Hagwon is the university. If you're able to get into a university, you can expect to make anywhere between 2,000 or 2 million won to as high as 3.5, sometimes even higher, depending on your qualifications. With a master's degree and provided that you're working for a good university, um, you can expect to make anywhere around 2.5 million won a month um, plus living expenses on occasions. If you're working at a lower tier university, um, those costs will be lower. If you do have a PhD, you can expect to receive anywhere from 3 million won per month to 3.8 or sometimes even more depending on your, your, the area of your expertise and depending on your PhD and the contract that you sign with the university. But I don't think uh, anybody with a PhD would be watching this video right now. Another option for an English teacher in South Korea is to work for an international school. Now, in order to work for an international school, you need to be a qualified teacher. There is no way around it. There may be some places outside of Korea that still hire teachers without a teaching certificate, without a teaching degree, but inside of Korea, an international school, a legal, legitimate international school, will need to have teachers who are registered in their home country and, and have a qualified teacher status. Um, in the past, there were some scandals uh, with schools that portrayed themselves as international schools but actually were not registered as such, those schools no longer exist. Uh, a couple of years ago, the government cracked down on them and poof, they're gone. They had to pay huge fines, people were left stranded, and they were frustrated and it was, it was just chaos. The last option for teaching is private tutoring. Now this is one thing that you probably don't have to worry about because if you're coming to South Korea, you will be receiving an E2 visa, which means that you will be owned by your employer. And in most cases, working privately is considered illegal and could get you deported if caught. So don't worry about private teaching for now. That's really not on the table for you. Now this question addresses a completely personal interest. If you like to party hard, then you might want to steer clear from the countryside and direct yourself towards the cities. Here are the three biggest cities, two biggest cities, which would probably be the perfect target for you if you want to party like it's 1999. Number one, Seoul, the capital city. I think it has something like 12 it has something like 25 million citizens living inside the city, which is about half of Korea's population, South Korea's. We're not looking at the north because that's a different area. Seoul is regarded as a very different city by most Koreans and living in Seoul will definitely keep you occupied and keep you busy and it will give you a lot of things, a lot of opportunities to explore the country and to see what Korean life is like. The second city is Busan, which is located at the exact 
opposite end of the peninsula. It's in the far southern, southeast corner of South Korea. Uh, it's located on the ocean, which means that you've got access to three beaches within, I want to say walking distance, but it's not actually walking distance. But if you're on a bicycle, you could probably bike from one beach to another, to the third one. And then there is further down some more beaches which you could access. The third city is Ulsan. That's the city I live in. It's the industrial hub of the country. That's not a great thing. Nah. But because of the sheer economic power house that Ulsan has become, teacher salaries tend to be a little bit higher compared to Busan. If big city life is not something that you're, you're aspiring for <clears throat> and you want to find the quiet of the countryside, then that's probably where you want to go. Stay away from the larger cities. Uh, the smaller tier cities like Daegu or Pohang um, may prove to be a better option. If you'd like to stay away from the industrial areas of the country, I would suggest to head west to Jolado, where food is cleaner, the air is cleaner, and the people may be friendlier. I don't know. Make sure that your list of things you want to bring is small. Korea is a very developed country. So anything you want and need, you can find here. And I think you will never get bored with Korean cuisine. It ranges from seafood to junk food, but a different kind of junk food. Not like the hamburger stuff, but the more fresher, healthier type of Korean junk food that you get here. So pack lightly, unless you're traveling with a big family or with at least two children, in which case you might need a lot more packaging. I would suggest to bring no more than two bags. One backpack you can put on your bag. And if you need a carry-on suitcase, no more than that. Korea is a very fashionable country. People are crazy about fashion. You can find all kinds of clothes. The only thing you might be in trouble with is when looking for shoes. If you're a larger person, if you're taller or have longer limbs and longer feet, you might find yourself in a similar situation to me where you might not be able to find shoes. So if you have large feet, bring a couple of extra pairs of shoes. You will be able to find them here. There are places, but you really have to go out of your way to kind of find them. There's always Amazon. Uh, Amazon works very easily, very quickly. It delivers within a couple of weeks. You have eBay as well, and there are other options. For those of you who have decided to actually come here, you will most likely be here for at least one year because that's the regular contract that any school signs with. Uh, it's a minimum of one year. So you'll be here for a year. Uh, and I do not recommend breaking a contract for whatever reason, unless, unless in an emergency situation you find yourself with an employer who is just unbearable, drives you nuts, or they're trying to rip you off, which I hope that you will not end up with, that you do the research before you get to the point of actually coming here. There are three psychological or emotional stages that you can expect to go through. And it happens to all people. I've never heard of anybody who, who hasn't gone through these. Number one is the honeymoon stage. The honeymoon stage is the place in your mind where everything is great. Everything is beautiful. You're in a new country, you're experiencing everything for the first time. The food is great. The people are great. Um, everybody's treating you, you know, wonderfully. Your new job is exciting. And that all lasts until the time where the honeymoon period wears off. At which point you might begin to miss your home. You might begin to notice the strangeness of things. You might begin to think that some things are weird because they're not the same as they are back home for you. You might find yourself annoyed with certain things or with the, the people or maybe the language that people use in which do not despair, that's just the phase. And just the second phase of the adaptation period. There are many ways in which you can remedy and I will go over them in just a little while. The third stage is adaptation. You come to understand that Korea is the way it is and nothing will really change. You have to change and you have to adapt to a certain extent. Nobody's asking you to become a completely different person, but you are expected to adapt a little bit and that will help you with your life here and it will make it for a better stay. In the second stage, you can expect <clears throat> to be seen as different because you will be different. You will stick out like a sore thumb, especially if you choose to, to work in a rural area. Rural places 
will have a very small number of foreigners, if any at all. You could just be the only non-Korean person that happens to live in a tiny little village or the smaller city. So people will look at you differently. Children might point and say, hey, wake again, which is the word for foreigner. In some cases, you might experience some mild racism. In other cases, you might experience some stronger racism. But the racism, in whatever shape or form it might take on, it will never be as bad as you may have experienced it back home. If you've never experienced racism, well then expect to experience a little bit of it here. If you end up living in a large city like Seoul, Busan or Ulsan, you will find that you do not stick out like a sore thumb. You will find that there are a lot more chances for you to interact with other foreigners because these cities will have a lot more opportunities to get together with people who are in a similar situation to yours. Uh, expats who live here and work here, who have been living here like myself and working here for decades, maybe longer, and people may be coming from all walks of life and doing all kinds of jobs. These days, teaching English is not the only opportunity for foreigners in Korea. Uh, while this may have been true 15 years ago, it no longer is. This is a very important piece of advice. Remember that your employer is also your visa sponsor. They are the ones who are responsible for you, so to speak. They vouch for you as an employee, which is why the immigration granted you the working visa, which is why working on the side is often frowned upon. So the only two ways that you can work on the side is if you are married to a, uh, a native Korean, in which case you would have a different visa and then you could work for your full-time employer and have additional jobs. The second way, if you are here on an E2 visa, you might be able to do some additional work on the side, provided that the employer agrees to that condition. Being at the mercy of the employer, so to speak, does not mean that you need to be a pushover. You have to keep in mind that the employer needs you as much as you need them. It's a very tightly knit relationship. You need to understand your own value as a teacher, which is why it's very important for you to understand the contract before you sign it, so that there are no questions on left and there is no gray areas that are misunderstood. The entire experience may feel overwhelming at times. And while you go through the honeymoon phase, this phase will not last forever. In my experience, it's anywhere between three to six months until the honeymoon phase wears off. Once that happens, you're bound to start feeling a little bit lonely and a little bit left out because you might realize that you do not speak the language as much as you would like to which inhibits you from having conversations, maybe because of a lack of friends and most likely due to the language barrier that you may experience. If you're lucky enough, you might have a, some coworkers whose English is fluent. You might be working with other foreigners uh, in the same school. Most Korean teachers may not actually have a lot of English ability. There's a lot of schools who hire Korean English teachers who are not actually able to carry on a conversation in English and only teach grammar uh, based out of books. They may not necessarily have the skills to use their English in a communicative way, which means that you will not be able to have meaningful, deep conversations like you may be used to having you know, with your friends back home. If you're lucky, you will be made feel very welcome by your employers and your bio employees and you'll be able to go out and have fun with your teachers. But during dinner time, you might find that most of the people speak Korean and you don't understand any and you will just be left there by yourself with your plate of food, listening to a conversation you do not understand. Don't forget that there are a lot of people who are in the same situation as you. The country is full of Westerners, full of foreigners who are teaching English as well. And it is your job to get out there and find these communities and get involved with these people so that you do not feel left out and begin to feel like you're the only person in the entire country who does this job. You're not. Every large city and every small city that I've been to has communities built around English teachers. Uh, people who come here have been working for many years and in Ulsan, for example, there are several different clubs. There is a soccer club, there is an ultimate frisbee club, there is a writer's guild, there is a hiking club, there are a couple of bars that are owned by foreigners um, where people 
gather every weekend in these places, um, have activities and have events that they uh, that they manage every weekend to keep people busy, to keep people engaged and involved with the local communities. Because the worst thing that you can have happen to you is feel alienated in a place that is full of people doing the exact same thing you are. The final point to keep in mind, and probably the most important, remember that you're in a new country, you're in a foreign country, perhaps a place you've never been to. Korea is beautiful, you've got mountains that are covered in forests, and you've got beaches that are covered in sand right next to the water. Korea is a peninsula and it's surrounded by oceans on three sides. Wherever you go, you should be able to have access to water. It's a great place to explore. There's a lot of attractions. There's a lot of beauty in the country. So whatever negativity you might experience, remember that you are in a new, exciting, foreign land and it's just waiting for you to be discovered. If you haven't done so yet, please remember to like the video, subscribe to my channel. If you do have any questions, do not hesitate to message me. I'm always, always ready to answer your questions. I answer my comments promptly and I'll be here waiting for your messages. You can check out my other videos that are located here, here and here. And remember to subscribe to my channel, here.